So far, I've only done 2020 series that I had an interest in. But I figure, if I end up doing all 2020 series Funimation has to offer, which is the plan, and I continue to only do series I have interest in, I'll be stuck with a pool of sludge in the last few months. So probably would be smart to tackle at least a few of these now, so I'll have some series to look forward to later on. So these coming reviews are for you later, me. You're welcome. But hey, you never know. If you stick to the same things, you never know what the other options have to offer. As they say, variety is the spice of life. So am I saying Nekaparo has a chance to blow us out of the water? No, absolutely not. It's fan service nonsense. I'm just speaking in general for possible series to come. So I did have some background going in because I have in fact been on Steam, so I've seen enough sales for the video game series of the same name to be tangentially aware of the series. I of course never play them because I'm not some horny teenager. I'm a horny young adult, thank you very much. Again, nothing wrong with that. Most of us have to go through this phase, and we all have at least one or two series we would like to pretend we never thought were good, but we're getting off topic. All I knew was that they were visual novels, probably have at least some sexual content if it isn't full hentai, so one can assume correctly that is fan service nonsense. But hey, I know how you love your cat girls, internet, so let's see what these cat girls are up to. Well, it focuses mainly on two of a series of six cat girls who work at their owners. Is that the proper term? Pretty sure there's no good way to say that another person owns another sentient being. But yeah, they're working at the cafe, and, and the two main ones basically adopt a kid into race among them. So our cast are rather simple. We have clumsy, incest, pervert, small, tall, blonde, and baby. And the plot is mainly loose misadventures, usually centering on one to three of them. Usually leading to some excuse to have prolonged shots on them in compromising positions, or give them a chance to do one of their two jokes. The only other major side character is the owner's sister, who acts as a co-owner and is a bundle of issues herself. Now, she not only takes kid shots of the cat girls, but actively molests them, if we're being honest. Plus, hey, a hint of incest, because that's what we consider as either a knowing joke or some messed up fan service. Either which I think is equally a bonehead move. But you know what actually got my interest? And no, it wasn't any of the characters, because they have as much personality as the plenty of figures I assume they have. No. I was trying to wrap my head around the world this story takes place in. Because for me, Nekabara has the car universe issue. It has too many questions that I will never know the answers to. We know that the cat girls have intelligence and autonomy, but are they second class citizens? Do they have rights? Do they have representation? Can they vote? Do they have groups of cat girls that advocate for their interests and concerns? Also, we only saw cat girls. Are there cat boys? Do they look the same as human boys? You could assume since cat girls look the same as human girls, that is the case. But without officially seeing a cat boy, we can't say 100% one way or the other. But if there are no cat boys, how do they reproduce? We know they do in fact reproduce because the two main girls are sisters with a non-present mother. It would be kind of creepy if they reproduce only through humans, as what is the age of consent for a cat girl? What is the cat to human year ratio? Also, if they have sex, and we know they have at least attraction, can you spay a cat girl? Would that be a crime? Probably. That goes back to the representation and rights issue. Also, have cat girls always been there, or did they eventually come about? And if so, what year was it? What's the population density? Was there a cat girl war? If we focus on the core concept of the show, we know cat girls can help assist and take jobs. Are they paid a salary? Or do they receive room and board and clothing as compensation? If they don't get compensation, is that basically slavery with extra steps? If owner hires or adopts a cat girl, do they get subsidies or tax exemptions? Can cat girls seek further education or work toward higher job positions? Is there regulations on what jobs they can get? We do know they can qualify to be, be out by themselves if they pass a test. Are there further tests to qualify them for higher rights? Can cat girls adopt or employ other cat girls? If a cat girl breaks the law, is there a cat girl court with a cat girl jury? And if they are convicted, do they get sent to a cat girl prison? Or do they go to a normal prison? What about genetics? What determines what species a cat girl is born as? What are the genetic lines like? We know at least two of the six are down with incest. Is that a common issue? Is this a rampant issue in cat girl society? There's so many questions, and there are no answers. So, if it isn't obvious, I was not interested in the series, and more interested in dissecting a possible cat girl society. If you are curious, I was in fact off the bus before they even finished the opening. The series really is made to be sold to teenagers and horny cat girl people. That's why plots are made to give viewers a load of fan service, and why there is a character whose literal joke is her screaming that blank is making her moist. So unless you need a 12 episode season of cat girls, no matter how low quality, injected straight into your bloodstream, this is not something I think is worth watching.